Lionel Messi is playing on his club team is find a way to get him the ball kind of almost in the low post. He is like a, a, a he plays close to the goal, kind of in the middle, and they just find a way to get him because he's short and stocky and strong, and they know if he can get the ball within 20 meters of the goal, he's the toughest guy in the world to deal with over the past decade. He's all, He has been. I feel a little bad for him because – a lot of people on the worldwide stage are going to, you know, blame him and say, "Wow, what he, he's kind of had a no-show career in the World Cup." Him and his team, not in that order, his team and him, and it's going to sully his reputation as probably a top three soccer player ever to walk the earth. <laughs> I would say that's who, a fair estimate. Who are the like like the Pele level? You mean? I, I you know, again, I'm not the expert yeah. who could talk about every yeah. player in history and go back to the 50s, but sure. I think most people would say that Pele. At his peak, and uh, there was a time when when Lionel Messi was truly unstoppable, and he would score three or four or five goals in in a match. Sometimes yeah. I remember I was down in Jamaica, and I was with some friends, and we were watching Messi play. And this was four or five years ago when he was at his true peak, and we were watching a game, and it looked like he was toying with other people, and, and he was just so much better than everyone else. And the other players on the on the pitch that day were some of the highest paid, highest reputation players on earth. They were in the Spanish league, and he was making them look silly. And Ronaldo. You know, he has the flash, but I'd never think he was un- as unstoppable as Messi at his best. Yeah, I, well, right now, I mean, I, I feel like just eyeballing. Of course, Ronaldo is just so dominant, he's so fast, and he's so much more pretty to watch than Messi. So I, 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 I'll take your word for it, but right now, obviously, I'm not seeing it in this tournament. So, yeah, so that man, we just chopped up some World Cup there, Paul. That was fun. Do you want, do you, do you want to order some uh, Harry Kane jerseys? Just walk around me and you with Harry Kane jerseys in Brooklyn? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. no come on, too much. that wouldn't look weird at all. No, no, not with my wife declaring that she's on Team England. I'm, I'm over them. In fact, I'm not even going to root for them anymore. I'm hoping for them to get eliminated quickly. Although, that's obviously not going to happen. You got to search out a really unattractive team to root for. No names. We're not going to give any names. <laughs> There's, that. yeah, that's a problem. There's no yeah. good, poor-looking teams. Leisureman, NBC Sports Radio. Now. If you want to know where LeBron James is headed, <laughs> then you have to stay with the Leisure Man tonight because Paul and we I know the know answer. People know. Yeah, oh, we totally know. Or you can give us a call if you happen to know. 855-323-4NBC. A lot of people ask me this weekend, Paul. I'd say six. <coughs> a guy at the bagel store. Bagel store three, guy. Two or three guys at the basketball court. Do you know where LeBron is going? And I decided to take another tack than usual. I say, yes, I know exactly where he's going, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> oh, really? You don't even engage? Because I, I got the question twice at the golf course yesterday. Hey, what are you guys uh, hearing? He asked, you what I, asked me what I'm hearing as if oh, okay. I have sources inside LeBron's camp. I'm air quoting. Yeah. Well, Rich Paul texted me the other day and said, hey, well, I was just looking at, uh, at apartments in Studio City, LA. Of course we don't know. The funny thing is... We look back the last time when he left Miami for Cleveland. Nobody, even the people inside SI, except for like three people, knew that he was going to jump back to Cleveland. Okay, so l- let me ask no you something. When he left the the Cavaliers, I don't know how many years ago, eight years ago, um, to go to Miami, do you remember where you thought he was going? Uh, and not just because the Boys and Girls Club was uh, uh, only an hour outside of New York City. I remember I thought he was going to the Knicks because it would be gigantic. And I think it's my own belief that if I'm a guy like him, I want to see how high I could hit, or how far of a home run I could hit. I go back to Kurt Schilling going from the Diamondbacks to the uh, Boston Red Sox and winning a title there. That was so unexpected because the Red Sox had never won. And uh, I thought LeBron was going to the Knicks because that was the biggest stage in sports. And the Lakers did, had no use for him because they still had a great Kobe at the time. Do you remember what you no. thought back then? Gosh, you know it's funny? I have no idea what I thought. I don't think, I kind of thought the Knicks seemed unlikely because of Charles Dolan. Because I'm in New York a lot and everyone hates the Knicks because of the owner. I don't remember. I really don't remember. I do remember in the middle of the day, Stephen A. said Miami was the front runner. Right. I, I don't, honestly, like what were the, do you remember what the Vegas odds were? Was it, was Miami in the, they were definitely in the top three. Was it Miami, Cleveland, and New York? Were that the last three? Do you remember? I remember Cleveland was in there, Miami was in there, and the Knicks were in there. Was it that the last three teams we came down to? That's what I remember. I, oh, I, and the know, Nets were fourth, too. The Nets were also in the picture. Was that because of Jay-Z and they were moving to Brooklyn? No, just to get to New York, I think. Uh, and also, they were loaded with talent back then. They had uh, Paul Pierce and some other guys. So, yeah, I don't remember that. But I, I will tell you, Paul, 
I think people, I was not in the camp that killed LeBron for the decision. And I think now that it's eight years later, we all realize we were a little too harsh on him for that. Do you agree with that statement? Well, yeah, because I, I the only, we've talked about this so many times before. I'm getting a headache just thinking about it. Yeah. The only thing that, it didn't bother me at all. I was like, he did it at a boys and girls club. I mean, that's, what what better thing can you do there? To yeah. take it to a boys and girls club. You're, I'm sure there was some type of huge charity uh in you know, cash went to the Boys and Girls Club of America or to the New York area, the suburbs. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, Jim Gray, he seemed to do a fine job. I say I'm taking my talents to unless you're some old stuffy dude who just hates young athletes because they're rich and famous and better than you and everything. Nothing he did was wrong. It's how we took it. Oh, 100 percent. And, you know, it's funny. So the next time he did Sports Illustrated, I've heard a rumor that he's definitely going to do it through his own media property, The Uninterrupted. This yes. time, since he basically, all the superstars are starting to get their own websites. So I think that's how he does it this time. What do you, how do you think he announces? Uh, I think it's exact. Well, he's going to control it. And I think it will be off his social media. And he'll like, I think he'll announce it with a long, drawn out statement with the reasoning. He'll answer all the questions that you'd possibly have in four or five paragraphs, why he's doing it, uh, family, basketball, lifestyle, all that stuff. And then he'll say, now there's no interviews. I'm not doing any interviews. I'll see you at training camp. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is if he goes back to Cleveland, which I think has to be the – isn't that the front runner? Well, the Lakers and Cleveland are the one and two, right? But it seems like the Lakers, all the, all that super team and Lakers stuff is falling apart. It seems like Paul George might want to stay in OKC. Carmelo resigned there. All the indications are that Paul George actually likes Oklahoma City. Kawhi is not going to the Lakers because the Spurs won't talk to the Lakers. So is is it really possible that LeBron will go with a bunch of youngsters and not really be competitive? Is that possible that he doesn't care if he can't win a championship this year? It, it, it's I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that the lifestyle of the town would take precedent over mm-hmm. the structure of the team I put together. But maybe he thinks that as long as I'm still in shape, I could put together a team that could battle with anybody if, after you look at that. And going to L.A., you start moving some pieces around. You say, we'll dangle Brandon Ingram. We'll dump Lonzo Ball. And next thing you know, you got four new guys who have the entire summer to play there. He played with two starting lineups, what, six starting lineups this year. But he had two full waves of players come at him this year. And he went through both of them and ended up in the NBA Finals. Well, coming out of the East. But there's, East. Not, there's not a lot you can move. There's not a lot of guys that are going to be loosened out there. You know, the core, if he went to the Lakers now and they did not get Paul George or Kawhi Leonard, they'd have Kuzma, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram. Uh, you know, that that's going to be a really, really young team around him. I'm not saying they're not good players, but in the West, do you honestly see them getting to the conference finals? No, I, it, you're going to need a break. You're going to need a break. You're going to need a rolled ankle by someone in Golden State. I'm going to go back to July 8th of 2010. I'm looking at articles that day. And give Chris Broussard credit. He was an ESPN senior writer. He's, quote, All indications are that LeBron James is leaning towards signing with the Miami Heat on Tuesday night, according to several sources with knowledge of the situation. Barring a late change of heart, sources say James has decided to join Wade, Bosch, etc., etc. He'll make his decision. It's called the decision on ESPN. It was a made-for-TV event, and ESPN produced it. And that was maybe, if you say LeBron made a mistake, was giving up control in that way. Maybe he didn't have give up control, but he gave up perception control but uh you know that's the only two reports i ever i could find that someone had it before yeah. he signed with miami yeah and i remember Stephen a was in that mix too sure so yeah that this so we have a week basically by next week at this time will be the eve of when nba players can start talking it should happen pretty fast you know i think two summers ago kevin durant signed on july 4th with the warriors so he had three days of meetings You know, is it amazing? Like, basically, in two weeks, we could be on the leisureman, and LeBron will be in the new uniform, and it's all over. It's all going to be done. Oh, man, that's going to be fun. The leisureman, Paul Paps, Andrew Perloff. Paul, Paul, we got a lot coming up here. We're going to do the movie segment, leisure approved, not approved, coming up, and a lot more coming up. World Cup questions you have for me later. But we always like to talk about what other shows we talk about later this week. There's a video out there right now, Pearl, of LeBron James' son, Little Bron. Bronny. Little Bronny. And so... He's in eighth grade. Does that sound right? Seventh, eighth grade? He's 13, right? So I don't know what grade that is, but something okay. like that. So 13 years old. I, I can't tell how tall he is yet. Um, he's playing in a, like, some league he's in. 
and he dribbles the length of the court and almost dunks it. He just doesn't get up high enough to move the dunk. The whole place kind of goes crazy. It's full of kids. And LeBron's there, his head on backwards. And LeBron jumps up like any other dad. But, I mean, if he would have dunked it, I think LeBron may have run on the court. It, it's got to be weird to be LeBron's dad because, watching him play because you want to react like any other dad. But you have to be aware that somewhere in that room, there's at least four or five cell phones yeah. on you, not on your son. Oh, I there's so much footage out there of LeBron watching Bronny. I see this one where LeBron and Chris Paul are there together watching Bronny, and it's basically watching both of them react to every play. You don't even see what the kid is doing. But it's so funny that age at 13, like, there's a kid who makes a turnover. He's got to be, what, four foot ten? Right. <laughs> so you forget how bad some of these kids they're playing are. I have no idea. I know LeBron wants to play with his son in the NBA. He's a little kid. How do you have any idea what kind of player he's going to ultimately but, be? But look at the math. He, LeBron only needs five and a half more years. I mean, that's, look at the math. If he's 13, he's in the league in five and a half years from now, six years tops. You think Bronny, from what you see there in that missed dunk highlight, is an NBA future Oh, star? I got him top pick of the 2000-whatever-whatever draft. I'm not good with math. All right. Did you ever play growing up, or did you ever have someone in your neighborhood who was like a freakish athlete who ended up being a pro? Um, besides, <laughs> and I know you had Kobe Bryant, but did you see Kobe Bryant play as a senior in high school at your high school? Oh yeah, I saw him. Ah, uh, I saw him on TV as a senior. I think I saw him live as a junior. Was it was it hysterical? Was it silly? No, 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 no. It was competitive. It wasn't well, like uh, he was really good, but he wasn't as physical as some of these guys. Like he was doing a lot of jump shots, a lot of driving. It wasn't like he was seven feet and just dunking on everyone. Yeah, you know, I I went and saw a couple of, like uh, really great pro players play when they were in high school. I saw Kevin Garnett play in person. And he was very thin, of course, but he could fly and he could jump and he could had a really good post game. He was playing against really high end Chicago talent, but there were times you'd see him on TV highlights in Chicago, and he's playing against like pretty average high schools, and it, and it looked funny. He would block shots with his armpit, and it was just really <laughs> like wild. I don't remember seeing we we had some pretty good football players in the South Side of Chicago, but I don't remember one that was just like a, a freak show where like he went on to be Adrian Peterson. My favorite are the one that there's just such a height discrepancy. If you want to have fun, Google Manute Bowl's kid, Bowl Bowl, who will be an uh, incoming freshman next year, and he's supposed to be a top 10 pick in two years. He's He's got to have nine inches on everybody on the court. So all he just does is run up and alley-oop dunks. It's so, right. so weird to see. All right, it's time for the movie segment. Before we get rolling, now we look at movies in history and kind of give them the good, great, all-time great, bad, hokey, whatever you want to label this movie after all these years. Do you have anything you see this weekend or anything you want to recommend before I hit these three movies? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I saw a documentary on Fox about uh, about soccer called No Se, no Se Chape, about a Brazilian soccer team that they're playing crash on the yes. way to the finals. And it's very recent, so there's so much footage. You see them interviewing the pilot right before they take off, and then they get lost. They lose power, basically, have some distress calls, and then they try to rebuild the team. Paul, like you always said, you said it, and you were the first one I heard say this. You cannot make great fictional sports movies because the realities are so dramatic and so powerful. This was an unbelievable documentary. It was done by The Rock, ironically. Okay. I had no idea what his connection to soccer was. Really moved by this. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I think this 30 for 30 era that we're in the past 15, 17, 18 years has really dampened the, the I guess, the... You, you wouldn't have Hoosiers now. Hoosiers wouldn't get made. They'd just make yeah. a 30 for 30 on Milan High School in 1950-whatever, 51, I think it was, in Indiana. But Hoosiers 35 years ago, 40 years ago, gets made. All yeah. right, here's three movies from history, and I want you to start it off, Pearl. This movie was released in June of 1988, Coming to America, Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, James Earl Jones as King Joffrey Jofer, and Eddie Murphy comes from his country where he's a prince. He's got an arranged marriage. He doesn't want to do it. He wants to meet his bride. He goes to Queens. Uh, there's a bunch of different scenes where Eddie Murphy plays different characters. Arsenio Hall plays different characters. If you haven't seen it, see it. I'm sure most of us who are listening right now have seen it. All time, where do you put Coming to America? Ooh, I'm not a Coming to America guy. You're not going to believe this. I, I think it's really funny, but it's it's sort of worshipped. Other than the barbershop scenes, is it right. really a great movie, Paul? You know, Eddie Murphy was pretty flawless at the time, and I think that may have something to do with it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of creativity with the different characters that they played, which I think took a simple movie and made it a lot better. Um, 
it may not be the funniest movie of all time, but there's some. It, it, it's it's one that you put on and you generally watch. I'm going to say it's in the hall of very very good. Okay, I'll buy that. But how do you compare it to Trading Places? Like Eddie Murphy's first. I watched Trading Places this afternoon, by the way. It How's was it on. Look? 